How many of you, how many of you know that we're in the presence of the Lord in this house this morning? Oh, yes. Amen. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. <clears throat> I want you to follow me closely this morning. I'm going to ask you to shake any distractions. If you put the roast in the oven and forgot to turn it on, don't worry about it. Go to Logan's Steakhouse today. I want you to stay focused on the Word because I believe God has a Word for us this morning. And I want you to be able to absorb what God says. Turn me to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Are you ready for the Word? Romans chapter 12, you know these scriptures as well as I do. These are scriptures that would minister to your heart. But I want us to, we'll be looking at quite a few scriptures this morning on the theme, Steps in Renewing Your Mind. How many of you will agree with me? Most of the battles that we face is in the mind. We hear we have to have a report from the doctor that we're not pleased with, our mind starts to play tricks on us. Amen? We get a report, somebody calls, and we hear that something's happened to a loved one, but we're not sure. Our mind starts to think of the worst. Whenever we find the devil tries to trip us up, he's usually not tripping us up in ways except for through the mind first. Amen? He'll try to deceive you. So I want to talk about the battle that goes on in the mind and steps in renewing your mind. Romans chapter 12. If somebody turn that fan off. It really seems to be noisy for me right now. Thank you. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Paul is speaking to us. He's instructing the church. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. How many of you know it's only reasonable to give God your best? Sometimes somebody does something extraordinary for the Lord. They go on a mission trip or they uh, hold a, uh, they're a hold order, uh, door holder in the house of God or uh, they'll find some place to serve and uh, they want someone to recognize them and show them a lot of recognition. Do you know that's only my reasonable service? I'd rather be a door holder in the house of God than to be, uh, to be in a high elevated place in the devil's camp. So it's only reasonable. A living sacrifice. What is a living sacrifice? We, we found in the Old Testament that there were dead sacrifices. Amen? The thing about a dead sacrifice, it doesn't try to crawl off the altar when the heat gets turned up. A living sacrifice, just about the time the pressure comes on, uh, it, 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 we want to get off. But uh, someone just said, it's denying of yourself. It's a time of sacrifice. Amen? It's being what God wants us to be. And do not be conformed, in verse 2. Do not be conformed. Don't be molded into the world system. Uh, don't be conformed into the world, but be transformed. Amen? Let transformation take place. Now let's be different than we were when we started. And when God moves in our life, now let's be transformed into the image of Christ. By how? The renewing of our mind. By the renewing. The reason I listen to the, uh, to the Word all the time, because that's how my mind gets renewed. Pastor, you're still renewing your mind every day. Pastor, do you still have mind battles every day? As long as uh, the earth remains, as long as we're on this earth, uh, there is going to be a warfare going on. The Apostle Paul had the problem. He said, I'm betwixt and between. The things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Uh, the things that I should do, I don't do. There's a battle going on in the mind that's pulling us uh, towards the carnal. Are you with me? 
pulling us towards uh, the flesh to want to do things we shouldn't do. Uh, and, and the way that I'm going to be conformed into the image of Christ, the way I'm going to be an acceptable sacrifice, which is only reasonable God, to, to the Lord, is I have to have a mind that's being renewed day by day. And when my mind is renewed, it'll prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many of you really honestly in your heart desire to be all that God wants you to be? How many of you really want uh, to be acceptable to God? How many of you really want to be pleasing to Him? He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. There's a reward that comes along uh, with, uh, with right standing with Him. Amen? So I'm going to give you some life-changing. These are life-changing steps to renew your mind. If we're not taught how to remove it and renew our mind, it will be the same next year as we were this year. Is anybody with me? But if I'm willing to let my mind change me and, and, and get more and more like in the image of Christ and I'm able to walk more in the Word of God, uh, then what will happen is I won't be the exact same person as I am today, but there will be change that will take place. So the first thing I'd like us to look at in renewing of the mind, I don't know how many of these I'm going to get into, and we'll probably continue this tonight. So if, if you want to know how to renew your mind and stay steadfast, uh, come back tonight because we'll probably continue in this theme. But number one, if we're going to have a mind that's going to be renewed, number one, we have to resurrender ourselves to the Lord. You know, every once in a while, uh, or every, every service, we have an altar call, and people will come down sometimes and get born again, give their life to the Lord for the first time. Then there'll be those that will come and make recommitments to the Lord. How I many of you know the recommitment is committing ourselves back where we used to be? How I many of you with me on that? It's coming back to the place where I once found the Lord. Amen. And uh, there's, there, there's a resurrender. I believe that every believer from time to time needs to examine himself and find out where he is with the Lord and sometimes resurrender or recommit himself to the things of God so we can go forward. Are you with me? So number one, uh, resurrender, resurrender ourselves uh, to the Lord in Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. Luke chapter 10 and verse 27 says this, So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God uh, with all your heart, uh, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all of your mind. Now that means that there's a place where our mind has to get involved. Back in the early days, in the early 70s, when the charismatic renewal broke, broke out and and I was a praise and worship leader at a church, and it was one of the hottest churches in, in Tampa. People were coming from everywhere, uh, leaving, uh, leaving uh, on Sunday nights. They'd leave the Catholic church, and they'd leave the, uh, the Presbyterians, and, and the Methodists would come, and they would come with their tambourines because they, uh, they'd heard that there was something going on. The Spirit of God was being poured out. Uh, there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and people came uh, to get a tap into that, and, and, and they'd bring tambourines, and they'd bring their tape recorders, and, and they'd come and, and get free. I mean, dance before the Lord, and, and the power of God would move in the house, and those are were, those were good things. Uh, that was a good day. But a lot of folks uh, got to the point where they thought uh, because the Holy Ghost uh, would come, they'd get filled with the Holy Spirit, they had to throw the mind out. You know, just sit around and, and, and say, God, whatever you want, you know. Uh, wake up in the morning, walk to the closet. Lord, what do you want me to wear in Jesus' name? You can blindly reach in and pull something out like we didn't have, a, like we're not supposed to think anymore. I mean, have you know, uh, we should think more after we got saved and full of the Holy Ghost than we did before. Because now we got the mind of Christ to think with. Amen. We got the power of the Holy Ghost that should make us think more, uh, more wisely, and, and 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 think what the Word says. We, uh, we 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 need not not get goofy because we're full of the Holy Ghost. We need to get more stable so the world can look at us and say this thing is real. And I hear an amen. So he answered and said, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself." I tell you, when you love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, you're going to start forgiving people. 
When you love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, you're going to start walking in, 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 in graciousness and love. And the arrogance are going to leave. And the attitude that, uh, that you got it all together, is, you're going to start humbling ourselves before the Lord. Amen? Paul urges us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Not what we want, but what God wants. Uh, don't walk according to uh, what our thoughts are, but walk according to the, the power of God. We need to resurrender sometimes our attitude uh, towards the Lord so we can walk humble. We can say, Lord, use me today. Let me be a vessel that's usable. I've seen some Christians are so arrogant. They have such an attitude. They get so puffed up about themselves, you don't even like to be around them. You probably never met anybody like that. Probably only me. The thing about Jesus, if you examine Jesus' ministry, he wasn't arrogant about anything. And if there was anybody that had the right to be puffed up, it was him. He was the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He would meet every person at, at the place where they need to be met. Amen? He didn't, he didn't ridicule anybody because of a certain way that they, uh, they walked or a certain religion that they had. He didn't ridicule them because of a certain attitude. He just tried to love them. Of course, whenever he talked to the scribes and Pharisees, uh, they were, uh, they were uh, displaying such an attitude. He had to deal with that. Somebody with me? That means every day uh, that we should make a re-surrender. Uh, Lord, am, am I where I should be today? That's the reason why there's a, a scripture, 1 John 1, 9. If I sin, I confess my sins. If I confess my sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and forgive me of all unrighteousness. I don't know about you, but I praise God for that scripture. I don't know if that excites you, but uh, I've missed it enough times to say, oh, God, thank you for that opportunity to be able to come back and to be able to cry out to you. And, God, I know uh, that, you're, uh, that you're faithful to forgive me. Anybody besides me, praise God for that scripture. Yes. Hallelujah. Every day we need to surrender. We need to submit. We need to realign our minds with the Word of God. That's the reason why it's so important to have a steady flow of the Word of God being pumped into you. Are you with me? Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I need a flow of the Word to be able to refresh me and to be able to speak life into me because there's always the other side that's always pumping the natural thing and the flesh stuff and the ungodly things are being pumped into our minds all the time. And we need to make sure uh, that our minds are being counter or we're counteracting uh, the world uh, by pumping in the word and keeping ourselves focused on the things of God. Because the battle is in the mind. What is the mind? It's the will. It's the emotions. It's what makes you cry. It's what makes you feel good and not feel good. And you can't even trust what your mind says. So you feel good today and you're saved. So you don't feel good tomorrow, you're not saved. That's not true. Your mind will tell you that. Amen? You're not saved because you feel good and you don't feel good. You're saved because the blood's been applied to your life. You're saved because you're a child of the king. You're saved because Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sometimes we need to, re re we need to uh, resurrender our minds every day. And here's the way to, to, to resurrender. Here's the way to make a fresh commitment of your mind to God. Number one, you have to be a worshiper. Oh, what worship we had this morning. Oh, praise God, did you enter in. Oh, did the presence of the Lord fill this house as we entered in with worship and we allowed God to flow through us and felt a river coming of God's anointing because when we start to worship in spirit and in truth, it'll start to allow your spirit man and your mind to get in tune with God afresh and you'll feel his anointing in his presence. Resurrender our mind every day with worship. Resurrender your mind every day with prayer. Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing, for this is the will of God. We should be prayer people. This house should always be the house of prayer. It ought to be a place where you can come and you feel the presence of God. It ought to be a place where the altar fills up like it did this morning because when people have a need, where should they come? They shouldn't have to run uh, to uh, uh, some uh, local group that has, that has no, con no consideration of your spiritual man. 
You need to come to the house of God where people care. Come to the house of God where people can pray. Come to the house of God where we can reach beyond the natural into the supernatural and pull down the anointing of God and let God touch our lives. We need to be people of prayer. I praise God for the prayer, for the, for the uh, prayer support that we have in this house. I praise God for Hanson and, and Sister Patricia and those uh, that will take time every week to, uh, to seek God and intercede in behalf of you and I. While we're out doing our thing, somebody's praying for us. How many of you are glad of that? You're going to pray for Eric and I in a few minutes, and, and tomorrow we're catching an airplane. We're going to go Dominican Republic. We're going to be back on Friday. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a, just a short trip, uh, but I want you to know uh, we're counting on your prayers. How many of you know any time you get on an airplane or any time you go to a third world country or any time you go downtown Tampa, we need prayer? I went, to, I went to Trinidad or something not long ago, and there was a lot of unrest going on in the country, and they even had a, a, a curfew that, uh, that everybody had to be in at 11 o'clock. And I said, how come the curfew? And says, well, uh, the drug cartels coming from Mexico and come from South America, and they're creating a lot of havoc at night, and people were getting killed. I said, oh, kind of like Tampa. How <laughs> I many of you know uh, the devil's not a respecter of persons? He doesn't care. He doesn't care if it's in, if it's in a, 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 a far-off island country somewhere or whether it's right here in, in the most popular uh, cities in, in, in our country. The devil's still active and still coming to destroy and to steal and to kill. Praise God we serve a God that gives life and gives it to it more abundantly. We need to surrender our minds every day to worship and prayer, and we need to surrender ourselves to the Word of God. The Word, the Word, the Word. I love this little electronic thing because I can just turn it on. Eric and I was working yesterday. We had some work to do over in the college office. And first thing we did is turn our little uh, 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 scriptures on and just set it up on a two-by-four for uh, an hour while we're working and just pumping. Uh, we, we started with the Psalms and just went halfway through the Psalms while we was working, pumping the Word of God into, into our spirit, man. How many of you know when you fill yourself up with the Word that something good has to come back out? Then allow the Lord to speak to you through the renewed mind. A lot of people are renewing their mind with the Word. They're spending time in prayer, uh, but it almost becomes a ritual. This can't be a ritual thing. This has to be a communications thing. How many of you know communication is not communication unless both parties have a chance to say something? Isn't that right? I mean, communications is not just me telling God all the things that I want and say amen, pack up my stuff and go on down the road and then start tying up the rest of my mind for the rest of the day talking about other stuff when God's going, wait, 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 wait. He had some things to say, but I never gave him time to say it. We need to get a mindset that when I talk to God, I say, Lord, it's time for you to talk to me. Lord, I've got ears to hear. Speak to me, Lord. It might be that small, still voice like Elijah heard when he came out of his cave, but I don't care how God wants to speak. I want to hear his voice. So we need to sometimes uh, re-surrender our attitude, re-surrender ourselves and mainly our minds to the things of God and say, Lord, I missed it in some areas. I got too busy. Uh, Lord, I spent too much time away from you. But God, I want to make a fresh commitment in my mind. Uh, the Lord, I'm available to you to speak to me. I'm going to talk to you in my prayer life. I'm going to worship you and I'm going to lift up your word and I'm going to walk in the anointing. That's just one thing. The second thing. If you're going to have a renewed mind, you must rejoice in the Lord always. And Brother Anson brought that out this morning during the prayer time. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, somebody help me. Rejoice. rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, listen. We need to rejoice in the good times. It's easy to rejoice when things are going well. When we're happy as he say, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, I rejoice, I praise you, I praise you. And until you come against that granite wall that you can't get him to go through or under or over, or you find yourself uh, not on the mountaintop today, but you're down in the valley, just remember it's in the valley that God restores your soul. 
Mountaintop's nice, and it's nice and cool up there, and, and, and the breeze is blowing, but it's down in the valley that the rich soil is. It's down in the valley where things grow. It's in the valley where we learn. It's in the valley where God allows us to come through and trust in him. Are you with me? So when do I rejoice in the Lord? I rejoice in him always. And after I'm rejoicing a while, again, I'll say rejoice again. Rejoice. Rejoice. What is rejoice? That's giving praise. What is rejoice? That's recognizing all God's goodness in my life. If my mind's going to be renewed, I have to stop camping around the negative and camp on the positive. I got to take the Word of God and find what it says about me, and I got to read it, and I got to listen to it. In fact, that's the reason why I like these little uh, these little talking Bibles because the Scripture says faith comes by hearing. Is anybody with me? Faith comes by hearing. I mean, reading's good, but there got to come a time we start hearing. And I tell you, the best kind of hearing is when you who read the word yourself and you hear yourself and you get it back into your, into your inner ear and the outer ear and the inner ear is two different ears. The inner ear hears it through vibrations. It gets it into your spirit, man. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I need to rejoice in the good times. I need to rejoice in the bad times. I need to rejoice when I feel like it. I need to rejoice when I don't feel like it. I need to rejoice when I'm in trouble. I need to rejoice when I'm out of trouble. Hallelujah. I just need to be a person that rejoices in the Lord always. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 it says, Then he said to them, Go your way. Listen, I like this. Then he said to them, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those of whom nothing is prepared. Give to those that don't have need. He said, The anointing is going to come that you're going to have plenty. And here's what you're going to do. Go your way, eat the fat, make sure there's plenty for yourself, and then drink the sweet. Uh, take, in, uh, take in the precious sweetness of the Lord and then send a portion to those that don't have. You see, we, can't just, uh, we just can't say this is for me and us for and no more. God's providing this for me and we're just going to sit around and have a happy, happy time. Uh, we need to get to the point where whatever God gives us, we're willing to let it go and release it to somebody else. God blesses us, let's bless somebody else. Uh, let's be a channel, uh, not a, a stopped-up dam. Let's be a, 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 a let's be a conduit that God can flow through us. Is anybody with me? And then it says, uh, uh, "For this day is holy unto the Lord. This day is holy." How many of you believe this day is a holy day? This day, uh, God is moving in his presence. Uh, this day, God wants us to recognize him. This day, uh, God wants us to rejoice. Don't be sorrowful. Uh, don't have sorrow. Uh, why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. As you rise up with the joy of the Lord, you'll find out the things that are keeping you from having joy has to, has to fall off your back. Uh, you'll find out that the burdens you've been carrying is not near as heavy when you start rejoicing in the Lord. Because the joy is strength. The joy of the Lord is strength. So really what we can say, the strength of the Lord is my strength. Because joy is his strength. When I joy in the Lord, I have strength and anointing to press through and go through any opposition in any circumstance. So the Levites, listen, this is interesting, verse 11, Nehemiah chapter 8. So the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still. For this day is holy. Don't be grieved. When we recognize the goodness of God, we don't have to walk around being grieved. When we recognize how much God loves us, that's the time to rejoice. When we recognize no weapon formed against you can prosper, that's the time to say, Lord, I'm going to win this battle. This might have been tough, but you know what? I'm going to win this battle because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. <clears throat> Are you with me, church? You see, we need to sometimes stop looking at what, what bad things can happen and let's start realizing how God good, how God, how good God is in our life. When we find our strength through the joy of the Lord, He renews the desire, He renews our desires to please Him. 
Sometimes the reason why so many Christians get in a hole and they get complacent and they get walking in, this, in, 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 in a hole is because they get so caught up in the negative things that they forget that God is the strength of our life. And if we'll just get out of there, he'll renew your strength. He'll give you victory. He'll give you a fresh vision. He'll give you a fresh revelation on who he is. And you'll start walking in the high places. The strength of the Lord. Regardless of our circumstances, I said regardless of what's going on around us, I said regardless of how high the gas prices get, regardless of how high the groceries get, regardless of what it costs uh, to, uh, to make it every day, God is still on the throne and he still has everything under control and he's still going to bring you through. Because the joy of the Lord will overshadow the disappointments and the discouragements that come our way. I believe we need, to, uh, we need to have a renewed mind in every area of our life. Lord, renew my mind on the way I think on the job. Lord, renew my mind the way I think about my, uh, my family. Lord, uh, renew my mind about the way I think about my children. Lord, renew my mind about, uh, about how I conduct myself and how I line up. Uh, let my mind line up with your word, and it will bring victory in every area of my life. Is anybody with me? You ready for another one? Another way to renew your mind is remember the good things you have. I said remember the good things that you have and who you are becoming and how you are becoming more and more like Christ. Remember the good things. Jesus said be more and more like him. And do you know that uh, there's a lot of good things that he's provided for you? Do you know all the promises in the book are yay, that's yes and amen? You know everything that God made? He made it just for you so you and I can enjoy all the things of the kingdom and we can enjoy everything that's on the earth. God made this world to be able to bless us and to be able to walk in the anointing. He wants you blessed coming in and blessed going out. He wants you blessed in the city. He wants you blessed in the country. He wants all you put your hands to to be blessed. That's what the Word says. People that have forgotten the benefits of being in Christ tend to slip back into mediocrity. People that forget about the blessings of God get caught up in the problems. People that forget about how good God is and all the things that he did. Sometimes I just sit down and think I, I have to remember back so I don't forget the blessings of God. God told Israel when they went into, into, into Canaan land in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he said, remember uh, that I gave you a land that you didn't till. Remember I gave you houses that you didn't build. Remember I gave you cities that were already there. Remember I gave you vineyards that you didn't have to plant. Remember I provided for you went into the land. If we take a little time think back to all the good things that God did, it wouldn't be long. You'd be jumping and shouting praising God. It wouldn't be long. You'd be, uh, you'd be saying, hey, Pastor, please open the church more. Can we have two more services a week? I just have to come in the house of God and praise him. Amen. Pastor, why don't we have more services? My goodness, I, don't, I, I want to spend more time in his presence. I've just realized how good he's been to me, how he's treated me he's so good and blessed me in every area of my life. And I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out, blessed with my wife and blessed with my children, blessed with my family, blessed with my job. I'm blessed with your, uh, with your abundance. Oh, God, I just want to come bless you. I want to come thank you some more. Hallelujah. Instead of getting complacent, dragging around, come dragging the church like it's, some, uh, like it's some effort or something we have to do. I'm telling you, we, we don't have to. We get to, praise God. Are you with me? We get to come in the house of the Lord and praise Him and worship Him like we did this morning. I'm going to give you one more and close. We'll pick this up tonight. Remember the good things that you have. Remember that. I'm going to give you a scripture for that, the good things. The Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, the benefits of God. Oh, listen to this. I know you know these scriptures. You've read them a hundred times. Let them be fresh to you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Do you know that serving God, you have benefits? You know, when people come to work uh, here or any place else, the first thing you want to know is what's the benefits? What's my benefit package? 
I have insurance. Am I going to get vacation time? Uh, am I going to have sick days? Uh, uh, am I going to have time off in cases of death in the family? They go, all the stuff that what their benefits are. And some things we say yes, some things we say no. But you know what? People like benefits. People want to know, oh, what's in it for me? If I'm going to, if I'm going to get the effort to, and, and do what I'm supposed to do, oh, what's coming in return? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you what your benefits are in the kingdom. Are you ready? Forgetting on the benefits, here's the first one, who forgives all of our iniquities. Now somebody shout every time I give you one because that's the thing that will make a difference in your life. Oh, praise God. He said uh, that, he, uh, that he will forgive all of your iniquities. That means forgive all of your sin. And that means he remembers them no more. Cast them out as far as east is from the west and not to look at them anymore. When you came to him, he cleared the slate, praise God. He covered it with blood, hallelujah. He made it as white as snow, not because of you, but because of him, hallelujah. Because of the blood of Jesus has been applied to your life. He's forgiven all of your iniquities. The second one, he heals all of your diseases. Oh, my goodness. Heals all of your diseases. I'm not talking about just a headache or a toe ache or, or, or a little a lumbago or, or when you get a, a little arthritis. I'm talking about the worst things that you can think of, the disease that would try to come to take you out. He is the healer of your diseases, praise God. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. He heals all. It didn't say just one, two, three, four. He heals all. Somebody say all. all. Every disease uh, that the devil's created to take you out, he has a healing power that will keep you in. Number three, he redeems your life from destruction. How many of you know most people that, that, that uh, have destruction in their life, it's self-destruction. Most people destroy themselves by something by attitudes, by substance abuse, by never realizing who they are in God, by never rising up above the circumstances and realizing how much God really loves you so uh, they camp around a uh, woe, woe is me syndrome and pretty soon <clears throat> they can't get out of the hole. Uh, but I want you to know the devil will destroy you by the way you think and God will set you free by the way you think. Amen. Who redeems your life from destruction. Number four, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowns you. That means he covers you. He puts a crown on your head and says uh, that I want you to walk in loving kindness. I'm going to give you mercies that you never believed in. I'm going to let you walk in the mercies of God, and every time you turn around, you're going to bump into his love. Hallelujah. These are benefits. You want the benefit package of being a Christian? You want to know what, uh, what your benefits are for being a child of God? I'm giving you some of them. Number five, who satisfies your mouth with good things? Oh, that just doesn't mean, uh, you know, I love, I, I love uh, Jesus better than ice cream, but ice cream really tastes good. I'm not just talking about uh, good things like cake and ice cream and, and lemon meringue pie and, and, uh, and, and peach pie that, uh, uh, that's just cut out of the oven and it's all, it's good and hot. I'm not talking about that. Lemon meringue, all that lemon meringue piled up to the <laughs> coconut cream. Okay, well, I'm not talking about any of that stuff, so get that off your mind. I, why did you bring it up? <laughs> Who satisfies your mouth? Who satisfies your mouth? What is that? The Word of God that will flow out of your mouth. Now, that's speaking the things of life. That's speaking in the people the things that will bring victory in their life and not death. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Speaking life into people and let their lives be changed because of the words that you've spoken. Speak comfort and encouragement into their hearts and <clears throat> let them feel your anointing. Number six, you ready? So that, your new, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of you believe God can renew your, renew your youth? How many of you believe God will take you and I don't care... What you've been through, I don't care what tough life you've been through, how hard it's been on you, uh, God can be, bring a restoration in your life. He can, he can do away with all the hurts and the wounds of the past, and he can set you in a high place. He can heal you. He can bring you into a brand-new dimension of victory, and you'll be renewed like the eagles, praise God. 
And they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. They'll mount up on wings like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Lord, teach me to wait on you. Hallelujah. Is there anybody with me today? Come back tonight and we're going we're gonna to see all the, all the benefits you have in Ephesians chapter 1. Benefits. I'm just going to give you a few of them. Ephesians chapter 1 starts out with, the, with verse 2, bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what he says. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. It says he chose us unto himself from the foundation of the world. It says having predestined us to adoptions even as sons. He says he's made us acceptable in the beloved. Verse 7 says we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of his sin. Oh, hallelujah, of sin. He said having made known to us the mysteries of the will of God. Listen, when you start realizing the benefits, all these benefits that God has for you, you won't have any time to camp around your negative thoughts. You won't have time to sit around and say, woe is me, does anybody care? You won't be able to have time to sit around and get in a corner somewhere and pout because nobody came up and told you they loved you. You won't have time for that. You'll be too busy rejoicing in the Lord and thanking him for his goodness and getting your mind renewed in the word of God and say, oh, Lord, thank you. What a great day. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. What victory I got today because I'm a child of the king. You get, are you with me? Are you with me? Go ahead. Give the Lord a great big praise, somebody. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name, forgetting none of his benefits. How many of you have a little bit of room left in your spiritual life to let your mind be renewed a little bit more? Okay. Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. The most important thing. Of all the things I've said this morning, the most important thing I can say or I can ask is do you have a personal relationship with Christ? Can you remember a time back in the recesses of your mind that you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Was there a time that you realized that you was a sinner but you knew that without Jesus you'd be condemned forever but you put your hand in the nail-scarred hand of Jesus one day. And you asked him to become Lord of your life. And he did just that. According to, his, according to the word of God. Pastor, how do I know? How do I know that I'm saved? How do I know I'm going to heaven? By answering this question, if you would die tonight, God forbid, but if you would slip out on eternity today. Do you know that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life? Do you know that you're a child of God? If you can't say yes to that, then maybe you would give the, this pastor the pleasure, the honor, and the privilege to lead you to Jesus and pray for you. Maybe you're here this morning and you used to be on fire for God. You was hot. When something was going on, you was there. And I had an opportunity to be in his presence. You wouldn't, you'd be the first one there. You loved him with all your heart. Your family felt the presence of God. Somebody hurt you, wounded you. Somebody didn't recognize your efforts. Maybe just the cares of the world, the pressures of life slipped in on you. And now you just don't feel his presence like you used to. If you would like to have a fresh touch of the anointing of God and you would like to feel his presence once again, it would be my honor to pray for you, pray you back in to right relationship with him, right fellowship with him. If you're here and you meet either one of those categories, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me this morning? Just lift up your hand and it would be my honor to pray for you. I'm not where I should be with God, Pastor, but pray for me. I want to get it right right now. Is there somebody? Waiting just a minute. Is there somebody? Would you stand with me, please? Would the elders come to the altar?
maybe the Lord is speaking to you about an area of your life that needs to be renewed in your mind. Maybe there's a family issue that you need a renewing of your mind. Maybe it's a situation with children. You need a little renewing. You need, God, help me work this out. My mind's not working right in that, but I want my mind to be where it needs to be. Maybe there's some areas in your business, your family, your job, and you would like to have God just give you a renewed mind. If that's you, I want you to come. And there's ministers here that will pray with you as we close this service. Let's sing it together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. If you have a need, come. Maybe you need a healing in your body. Come. Maybe you need prayer for something that's going on tomorrow. 